it's the beginning or it's the dawn of a new day. Yes, we've had so many programs dealing with issues that relate with women, but this one is a bit different, quite different, because we're talking about women in politics. You know, there is this thing that women have that just snatches them towards influence and power. And you know, when a woman handles something, you know, it has a little bit of difference. And that thing you call difference is beauty. So we're celebrating the female folk in politics, their achievements, what they've been able to contribute to the development of this country. And of course, we were talking about their challenges too. And you know, on this edition, of the program Women in Politics, we are having as our guest Honorable Fumilayo Tedrosho. She's been a three times member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, and you know, many have said different things about her. Some call her the Iron Lady, some call her, uh, I've tagged her the best dressed female in the house. But now we're meeting her in person and we'll be talking her, with her rather at length about herself the nation and ambition. You're welcome on the program Women in Politics. I'm your host, but you know how is my name. TV News, expanding your view. Uh, you've been in politics for quite a while, and in a particular interview you had recently, you said that you're not a professional politician, yeah. but you're professional in politics. What's True. the difference? Well, I believe that being a professional politician, that's when you talk about do or die, mm. because you don't have an alternative, and it's just politics all the way. But when you're a professional in politics, then you have your profession, and when you try out for elections or any other thing and it doesn't work out, you can go back to your profession. I have my wig and gown. I always tell people, I'll just shake it and go back to practice. So when you have an alternative, it's better than just being a, 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 a professional politician that you don't have any other thing to do and you're ready to kill just to get to that position. So I, I believe that um, we should encourage our children to arm themselves with their education so they can always have alternatives in life. In one of the interviews too, you also said that you never prepared for politics. You never planned to come into politics. Well, it's not that I didn't prepare. I never said I didn't prepare, but it was like, it was not my ambition in life to become a politician. I, my father was not a politician. My mother was not a politician. I did not have close people to me that were politicians. And um, I remember even when I told my father that I wanted to come into politics, he, he was worried because of that um, stigmatization that, okay, politicians, ah, politics is a dirty game, blah, blah, blah. But we must move away from that. So I didn't prepare my life as, okay, when I grew up, I want to become a politician. No. If you talk about helping people with so much passion, and I know there are other women who share your kind of passion, Talking about the number of years Nigeria has practiced democracy since the handing over from the military rule to democracy, why has Nigeria not been able to produce a female governor or president, just deputies? Is that not justifying the fact that women are wired to just take supportive roles in leadership? I don't want to agree with that. I think that uh, when we talk about that, we're, we're talking about tradition of the past. Because when you even talk about religion, the Bible says that you should submit to your own husband, not to any other man. So there's no excuse there. You, you understand what I'm saying? But when you talk about being, being supportive or, or, or what have you, women are brought up when they're younger to appreciate who you are as a woman. But also to understand that there's nothing the men are doing that you cannot do. In the olden days was when if there's not enough money, 
to send the uh, male and female child to school, you would choose to send the male child because you thought he was the one going to do the family proud. But now we see women are the ones also doing the family proud. You know, normally when I, I talk in a, in a female gathering, I tell them that people say, oh, what a man can do, a woman can do better. I like to say that. What a woman cannot do can never be done. Because everything that we do, we are at an advantage to the men. For one, we are the ones that carry the child in our womb. The men can never do that. It is because we have not yet prepared our, ourselves to do that. A Nigerian woman has not come out to say now that really, really, I'm in this party that is really on ground and I want to do this. It's either there is some little um, party where they don't ha even have um, um, resources or, or, or people to, uh, to assist or they, they really don't have... A, a so what do you think is the cause of that? It is our choice. Because if you look at other countries in, in Africa, they, they, there's a female um, president in Africa. If you look at Margaret Thatcher in, 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 in England, I mean, the, a prime minister, a woman, there is always room for women to occupy positions. But we must be sure of ourselves, and we must not want um, anything to be handed to us on a platter of gold. Actually, I do bother me to know say that power is not served a la carte. You have to go there to fight for what you believe in. At the, at the present time, even in the, in the Lagos State House of Assembly, no woman has said, oh, I want to become speaker. And has campaigned and has lobbied and, and whatever. So we need to be doing that. Nobody is going to give you anything for free. So I don't believe that is the men that are saying we are, we are taking the supportive role. If we have chosen to be there, there's nothing anybody can do about it. But if we choose that we want to run, we will support ourselves. So I feel that, I mean, with time, a woman will be bold enough to stand up as APC or PDP and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. And I'm sure that the people will support that woman if she's worthy in character. Because even the men that are running for these positions have to also be worthy in character. And we have to think about all that kind of stuff. And we must appreciate the fact that before, we did not have all these even deputy governors as women. It was male governor, female, uh, male governor, female, uh, male deputy. But now we're even having deputy governors that are women. We have um, um, ministers that are women, finance ministers, um, 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 defense, and, and you know, things like that. We have people in positions where they say it was only meant for men. And now women are going into those positions because they, are, they have shown that they can handle those positions. They might not be perfect, just like the men are not perfect, but at least they're there. There are some opinions in some quarters that that could be dangerous for the family. And because the family... To be president? For a woman to come out of the house and just have ambitions to be a politician, just like you cited example, today you had to juggle so many places yes. and combine that with your work. Children need attention and people have said that because children don't have enough attention from their mother, that is why we have lots of thoughts women in the street. Well, I don't, I don't agree with that. I feel that a man and a woman has a duty to their children as a family. It is not solely the job of a woman, but a woman should not abandon her duties simply because she's a career woman. You must balance your home. What I'm saying is that, and, and I feel that you have to also appreciate the fact that you cannot say that because you have a child. You are not the only one that had that child. It's you and a man that brought that child into this world. And you and the man are responsible for that child. It's in the olden days that the man alone will pay school fees. We have women that are paying school fees now and the men are not paying. We have women that are the ones that will send their children on holiday abroad and the man cannot afford it. So does that mean that the woman should not work where the man cannot even um, um, provide for his family? It doesn't make sense. I feel that we should start training our children to, to believe that they are equal to the men. When you are training your child in, 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 at home, don't just tell the female child to cook. Let the male children also be in the kitchen and let everybody feel like they're all human beings.
TV News, expanding your view. It's good to know that you're still there with us on the program Women in Politics. And now to more serious issues with the Honorable Fumilayo Tejoshu. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the figure of internally displaced people has been put at 470,000 and 70% 70 made up, 70 rather, made up of female and children. And recently we heard about the abduction of about 30 female folk in the northern part of the country. Isn't that, or let me put it this way, what's the implication of that on the campaign against the vulnerability of the Well, um, it is a big problem what you're speaking about, about the issue of Boko Haram, about the issue of kidnapping and um, all these things that are happening. But we must appreciate that in war, it's always the female, that's the woman, and the child, the children, that have those problems because they see them as the, you know, maybe weaker ones. But we should not condone these things. We appreciate the fact that um, Nigeria and Lagos State in particular are putting stricter laws in place to make sure that those things become a thing of the past. And we have to thank God that we, we even have data to talk about these things, you know, because in the past when things happen, we won't even be able to know the figure, the, the number of women that were involved or the number of children. But now we have those numbers because we are more alert to our responsibilities. We want to know how many women are being ex uh, affected. We want to know the number of, of children. And this will help us to plan for the future. We're not happy with what is going on with, 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 with these issues, but that is what has happened. And so with the numbers that are, are being reflected, it's something of great, great concern. We must continue to talk against it and put things in place to, to fight those kind of things. Well, talk a lot do. This, these people do not have access to food, they don't have access to shelter. And you know, in what situations like this, they are being molested. Yes, you see, when you, when you talk about um, war situations, situations of violence and things like that, we must not condone the perpetrators. The perpetrators must be, must be brought to book. And when those things happen, where they kidnap people or they, they rape um, women or they, 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 they kill women, because we know that there are some wars where the, the male um, 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 militants, let me put it that way, wants to know what the, the sex of the baby in the womb of a woman is. And we've had incidences where they cut the stomach while the woman is alive and bring the baby out just to say, oh, you think it's a, it's a male child, I think it's a female child, bring it out just to check. And of course the child will die and the, the mother will die. And if we look all over the world, they, they don't condone those things. For criminal um, acts, there's no statute of limitation. So if they think that they, they have gotten away with it now, they have not. Because they will still, you know, if they can find them, bring them to book. You sponsored the domestic violence bill into law in Lagos State House of yes. Assembly. How fast that changed the situation of things, considering the rate of violence against women and the increasing number of rape cases? Well, it's not an increasing number of rape cases. It's just that now people are speaking up. So you must understand the difference between increasing number of rape and increasing number of people that are speaking up. Now with the domestic violence law, people understand when they are being beaten that they can talk about it. That it's not your fault that you are being abused. With the criminal law, because rape comes under, under the criminal law as well. And you, you know that with, with the issues with them, women issues, we're able to encourage the women to speak up. Because we cannot solve anything. If you are raped and you don't talk about it, then it goes. The, the rapist goes without being punished. But if you speak about it, you can identify the rapist. For example, like a month or so ago, there was a lady in my constituency who the landlord's 35-year-old um, son raped her five-year-old um, daughter. And she came to me with the problem. We, we actually made sure that the Office of the Public Defender defends her and make sure that you know she gets legal representation in the in the court what's your reaction to the attitude of the police towards the protesters uh, talking about the abduction of these ladies because one would imagine if young girls were abducted into the camps of this dangerous uh, sets of human beings mm -hmm. what would be happening to them and here is a peaceful protest to bring those 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 girls out of bondage and the police is dispersing them 
Well, this is why we say we thank God that there's the confab going on. This is why we're saying that we need to have state police. You know, with the federal police, there might not be enough control as to what is going on. There are too many of them in number. But with the state police, there will be you'll be able to identify those persons. And the police is not above the law. If the police has done something wrong, the police should face the penalty. So it's not an issue. I personally, I always say that, first of all, we need orientation for these policemen. Even when we talk about issues of domestic violence, we need continuous orientation for these policemen. So when you talk about those issues where, I mean, the police are not handling the matter well, they must be properly trained. How much money is coming from the federal government for training of these policemen? Is the money going to the right place? You know, these are all the things that we need to ask about. And hence, that all those things that are in the exclusive list, it's not working anymore from everything that we're seeing. We see the immigration uh, uh, um, problem of, of, of on Saturday. You cannot really monitor all these things anymore because everything is in the exclusive list. Hence, in the state, we can't do anything but just to talk about it. If the police does something wrong, we cannot summon them by force. If they come, they come. If they do not come, they don't come because we don't have jurisdiction over them. It's the federal... Um, legislators that can compel them so once we start to understand that you know things are different now nigeria is getting older and wiser we're getting more educated and more enlightened and the constitution is not working for nigeria anymore in the opening ceremony in the opening speech of the president for the national conference actually said uh, the delegates have been saddled with the responsibility of amending the constitution or if Nigerians want to change everything totally if you were to be a delegate what is the thing you would like changed? First of all we must appreciate that with this confab or however you want to put it is a renegotiation of Nigeria as a whole we have to sit down as delegates there and decide how we are going to renegotiate Nigeria and make things work we look at the issue of that um, 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 federal police to try to get in state police. We look at the issue of, you know, when you're talking about male and women and um, female issue in the constitution, they, play, they, they say if a man marries a, 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 a foreigner, a Nigerian man marries a foreigner, she becomes a Nigerian from the constitution. But if a Nigerian woman marries a foreigner, does he become a Nigerian if he wants to be? You know, those are the things that we need to look at and make it fair for both male and female. You talk about um, this confab, you are talking about um, oil producing countries, um, states, sorry. The oil producing states, when you talk about the kind of revenue that the, the federal government is giving them, they recognize the fact that they are they're producing the oil in their states and they give them extra money. Like, like maybe cross river, or sorry, acquire bomb, they might be giving them like 30, 20, 30 billion give Nigeria like 4 billion, or, I'm sorry, Lagos State like 4 billion. But when you're talking about VAT, we have the airports in Lagos State. We have the, the seaports. They're not giving us anything to write home about. You understand what I'm saying? So we must look at this thing and stop being partisan with issues that have to do with governance. And be fair, because you will not always be the party in power. PDP cannot always be the party in power. So if you do things now and believe that as PDP ruling uh, um, um, f f the federation, you are doing those things because you are there in the federal and you are happy that everything is concentrated in the center. One day if you lose the center, you are going to feel the same brunt. On the day, let's just call it Nigerians encourage corruption inside June 1st of the the deal is at 7:20 a.m. every day on Core TV News. But if you say yes, APC is the next good thing to happen. Yes. And some have said that APC is a bringing together of the same old folk who have not done well according to the NPDP. Okay, so what let, me, let me tell you something about that. If I were in PDP and I was trying very hard, right, because a tree cannot make a forest. So those certain people that knew that they were putting in so much and that they, we, them being in PDP was not reflecting the true um, 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 quality of the work that they were doing in their states are the ones that have come to APC. Because they want it to show, and they want that change, and they are tired of um, promises unkept. So if you say that, oh, those people were in PDP, they left there 
because they saw that their efforts were being, you know, it's like a rotten egg spoiling everything else. Political parties who have uh, been at, accused of just being on the opposition and forgetting about supporting the government that be. It is expected that when a particular party is in governance, fine, there should be constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. It's not that when the government does something, you just want to harm and armor. What is APC doing to put ends together with the government that be? To just make one Nigerian forget about party? Um, can you give me an example? Because I don't know when APC has ever hammered and hammered on anything that PDP has done. The only time I know that we speak out is like incidences of that um, immigration thing, for example, which I particularly felt was not handled properly. I felt that if we have a, a, a true um, Nigeria, a one Nigeria, the people of Lagos State, the representatives of the people of the state will have enough information to guide the people that go and went to do that interview. So I, I've, I've never seen when APC or ACN in those days has gone on and on to hammer. They have only pointed out things that they feel they want to sweep under the carpet that will not be good for Nigerians as a whole. It will begin to, to make people lose confidence in governance. For example, if we did not speak out about the immigration thing, the Minister of Interior I will not apologize because initially he was saying they are impatient those children are, you know he wasn't sensitive to the plights of those that lost their children in that um, incident how do you think nigeria can deal with unemployment and what is your reaction to government agencies sucking money out of job seekers our primary duty is to care about the welfare of these people even the constitution says that and if we do not think about these people they were not fit to be in government then when you don't have employment there's no security there's a problem a big problem and if you see the number of people that were at the stadium in Surule, it was unbelievable you wonder was it a gimmick did they just you know low people there to try to campaign and then it boomeranged on them. We don't know. Let's move to you as a person now. What have been your challenges in politics? There are many challenges in politics. And to me, I don't see anything as an issue. Challenges come and go. It's not what happens that matters to, to me. My father will always tell me that it is not the challenge that matters, but how you handle the challenge. Um, uh, 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 the father of, of, of the black race, let me put it that way, Mandela, said, it is not how much you hit somebody that matters. It's how much of that punching that you can take as a person that makes you a leader. So to me, challenges are things that I don't dwell on. There's no challenge, challenge, challenge that I have had that I have not overcome. So it's not, it's not an issue in politics. Every time there's something happening. Every time. So talking about challenges, would you tell us seriously why you were impeached in 2009 as the deputy speaker? I don't know why I was impeached too. And I don't think the word is impeachment because the constitution does not uh, provide impeachment for the deputy speaker. It's more of a removal. And why was I removed? I do not know. Anybody can wake up in the morning and decide they want to remove you. But the most important thing is that Every single allegation that was raised has been, I have been cleared of them. They're not things that I've done, and that is what matters to me. It's not the, dep the deputy position, speaker position does not make me who I am. There are many people that have been deputy speaker, you don't even hear about them. It is my work. You know, there's a Yoruba adejipe, Tiogweba de Loju, Wafigbari, or something like that, that if you are sure of who you are, you will stand tall. So it's not, I mean, they removed me as the de deputy speaker. It's not a big deal. The big deal to me is my image, my reputation. When you tell lies on me, it becomes an issue to me. And I thank God that the same people that said she did, she did this, she did that, she did that, are the same people, remember half of them. They said um, I was, um, um, was it arrogance or something? But, and all these are perceptions. You can say somebody is arrogant. So does that, does that disturb competition? If I want to remove you and I feel if I remove you, I'll take your position, does that have anything? It doesn't have anything to do with party. As a matter of fact, maybe we only had like um, maybe two PDPs out of 40. 
So it's not a man, it's not a party issue. If it was a party issue, that means I'm going against my party. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's why you say, oh, your party was a majority. They should have supported you. So it has nothing to do with the party. The leadership of the party gave me full support. That's why I returned after that. There are many people that have been removed as speaker or deputy speaker or even smaller things that don't return. But if the party did not want to give me a ticket, I will not be here for a third term. So I'm here as a, an, or a third term and I'm the chairman of the finance committee, which is one of the most sensitive committees in any state. I'm first female, by the way. To chair that kind of committee so to me it's not a big deal it doesn't it doesn't stress me what stresses me is when somebody tries to say i've done something i've not done and that what was i insisted that that has to be addressed if that is not addressed we cannot move on from there and it was properly addressed but some did say like it wasn't really a big deal for you because uh, there was some insinuations that there was this connection between you and the certificate forgery scandal that came with the successor and those that seemed opposed to you. Uh, well, anybody can say what they want to say. It doesn't really bother me. At that time, if you cannot sleep with your wife, it's Fumite Joshua. So I didn't really care. I mean, if somebody has certificate, uh, whatever or not, that is not my own problem. And you have to appreciate the fact that I don't even know whether it's true or not because I'm not even close to that person enough to know the history of that person, what school the person's persons went to, or what they did or did not do. The only people that can talk about them are people that are close to them. There's a Yoruba adage that if I don't know them, I don't know where their house is, I don't know where they grew up. And I don't think they knew they know where I grew up. So I wouldn't know whether they went to school or they didn't go to school. So I won't be able to say that their certificate is original or is false. They are the only ones with their close associates that can make that decision, not me. All right. So that is their own that is their own problem. I cannot talk for them. But anybody but I know they did not come to meet me to tell me I was responsible for it. But I don't know where you got your information from. Maybe some people were telling you that. But somebody has asked me before that, oh, that this, and I say, to me, if they can't sleep with their wife at home, they will say it's for me, tell you, show. Because I see it as just, it's an inadequate way of talking about issues. If you say I don't have certificates, what I should say is I have or I do not have. Not it is you that went to say I did not have. What's the connection? When they said one man did not go to, did not serve as NYSA, I think it was some speaker. Was it not um, uh, Dineji Bankoli? He brought his certificates out. He brought pictures out to support it. He didn't accuse anybody. So I think some of these things, they're just petty. When you start pointing fingers, then you, you must have an excuse. If somebody says anything about you, if they tell me no, I didn't go to school, I'll bring my certificate out. I went to school. I won't start looking for who said it. Thank you very much for your time with us on Women in Politics. Thank you for having me. And that's it on Women in Politics for this week. Next week, it promises to be more wonderful. And you've heard it as a woman. You have the right to dream. And you have the right to live your dream. Next week will be more exciting. Once again, I am Evelyn Adiba. Thank you.